Hello everyone, welcome here. <clears throat> Today, we are going to be playing an old classic, or at least I view it as an old classic. Um, I don't know how many people ever actually played this game. I doubt it was ever incredibly popular, but um, I certainly enjoyed it when I was younger, so. Let's fire it up and give it a little bit of play. So here we are at a DOS prompt. As you can see, nice and old. And my Linuxisms are betraying me, and I immediately use ls to list directory instead of good old. CD, at uh, CD, um, DIR, there we go. Oh wow, mouse wheel um, actually does something. And it does not scroll back the buffer. <clears throat> I'm too used to modern consoles. <laughs> but anyway. We just run a send. And it starts up the DOS extender. And off we go. And I'm going to have to turn that volume down. Uh, let's see. Give it a good solid minus 10 decibels. Let's see, make sure this is affecting... Um... Yes, that is affecting OBS as well. Okay, good. It should, but just making sure. Eh, I think we'll move it down 12 decibels. All right. So this is Ascendancy, which is a game that exists. <laughs> it came out in 1995 for MS-DOS, and it's actually pretty fun. You haven't seen DOS in a bit? Well, neither had I, honestly. Let's go ahead and play the tutorials because um, I'm a fan of tutorials. Anyway, hello survey, hello Treebeard, welcome here. So this is a very old 4X game. Um, this of course was back before, well Windows 95 was very new when this was new. So it, yeah, they move up to the corner, you get a little exit dialogue, which is cool, I guess. Um, we'll probably never use that. Well, they're going to want us to, but we don't have to. Okay, so that was just a tutorial to learn how to use the menus. Basically. <laughs> and they dump us right at the, right at the menu, ready to click tutorial timber two. <laughs> Getting a new game. That was just the process of beginning a new game of ascendancy. Okay. Some of the mouse movements are me, some of the tutorial. But at any time, you can touch the mouse and take over. So like here, I take over. Um, new game screen contains all the options for configuring a new game. Which, there's not that many options, but there are some. Scroll the list, choose different races. Races are all pre-configured, you can't make your own race. But they're all different, so. And you can change your color. Change a few other things, of course. Yeah, most of these mouse movements are the game. Not me. I just click continue tutorial and they go on to the next thing. 
Anyway. Okay. So, yeah, we'll get more into the screen in the next tutorial, but this is where you actually play the game. And the selecting the next tutorial is once again the game doing it for me. Which is kind of cool, but also... Yeah. Anyway. No. Go away. Okay, so ships. Give us a list of our ships. You can use those controls to move the galactic display around, which is 3D, by the way. Like, this view back here is 3D. It is pretty cool for the time. I mean, it's 95, so it wasn't that old, but still. It's pretty cool. Yeah, see? In the game with knowledge only of your home system. Knowledge of stars is gained by either traveling to the star on a ship or obtaining information from another alien species. And you can click on each little system and see what's inside of it. Which is separate planets. Stars and so on. Like this one, there's a sun and, and a, um, a single planet. Okay. Tells you some information about how you can tell different what's at a star just by looking at its little icon here. How you can tell if a system has ships in it and whose ships there are. This little screen is quite informative actually. And the different colors of Star Lane mean different things. Okay, display ship and display colonies. You can turn the ship icons off and you can turn the colony icons off. And then you can turn information off for each individual race. Okay, and now it's going to take us back to the next tutorial. <laughs> I forgot it did that for the tutorials where it, it take you, it exits, the, when you can't exit the tutorial, it exits the tutorial and takes you back to the tutorial screen by showing you how to do it, which is actually kind of cool. Anyway. System display. The previous one was kind of about the galactic display. The next one's about the system display, which is the actual inside of the system view, which is this right here. Begin with ways to manipulate the system display itself. Lower right corner of the screen are controls for rotating, zooming, and centering the display. Okay. This is also 3D, and ships move around in 3D space. Which is cool. Of course, it's only 3D and, like, it's drawn in 2D, but it's... Simulated in 3D. You can turn on and off different features to help view things clear more clearly or less clearly, depending on what you're looking for. <laughs> you can filter out ships or planets or both or whatever. 
is useful when you're trying to engage in combat or whatever. Each ship you build is made up of the components you place on at design time. And ship designing is um, fairly straightforward and quite cool. It's one of the things that really I quite enjoyed about this game back when I played it. Okay. And here you have a ship and it shows the weapons on the ship, or components on the ship, over there on the side. The one, the three that are invisible now are all weapons. So they're gonna fire some missiles. Over there. Notice the right side of display automatically changes back to displaying system object after component is used. So you select the next ship or planet you wish to use. Anyway. Shields are used to protect your ship from damage inflicted by weapons. Shields can be toggled on and off. Or only shields that are on protect from damage. Okay. And by selecting it, you turn it on, of course. And then, of course, there's special components, which are interesting things. And passive components. Which are more quickly those, these Tonkin fre fre frequency analyzers are for scanning stuff. They're an early game tech, I think. And then you have engines and various other such things. Yeah, those are scanners. And of course you can shift click on anything to find out what it does any time. a ship. You just click to set where on the grid you want them to go and then you click again to set how high or low you want them to move to. It's very simple and intuitive. And of course you can order ships to fly between systems. That's what these blue balls are is um, trade lanes to the next system basically. And it might take multiple turns to move a ship somewhere. Ships have a certain number of... Basically, there's two types of turns. There's system turns or ship turns, or whatever you want to call them. And then there are um, galactic turns. Depending on how a ship is equipped, it can move several times. You can carry out several different actions, but then when it runs out of actions, you need to do a whole game turn to refresh everything. But anyway. So they're going to use an orbital weapon to fire on a ship. Which is cool and all. And of course, if there's hostiles in the system, then you have to take turns with them when you're moving and stuff like that. Now we learn about managing colonies. And how to do research. Which is kind of, the research tree in this game is kind of cool. It's 3D too. 
Everything is arranged into a giant cylinder. You can rotate the cylinder and move up and down it to look at the various parts of the tree. And here's the planet display. It's a fairly simple, there are three types of progress. There's research, industry, and food or life or whatever. And then there's different colored squares on the map. And by um, putting things in the right color square, prosperity, this is what that one's called. Research, industry, and prosperity. If you use the right color square on the map, when you build the building, then it gets a bonus. One industry, one prosperity. And of course you have population with a population cap. Anyway. And you can increase the population cap, but population's pretty simple. Most of the game mechanics in this game are pretty simple, but they are um, interesting. They're easy to understand. But they're complicated enough that the gameplay is pretty fun. Now, unfortunately, the enemy AI is dumber than a box of rocks. That's its big downside. But there is a um, later patch that was released that made the AI smarter. Well, it didn't make it smarter. It made it harder. It gave the AI a bunch of bonuses. It did make it a little smarter, I guess. Because the AI does a few things that are a little more intelligent than what it would otherwise do. And here they tell us about the time advancement buttons. This one does one day, and this one does as many days as required to reach the next event. So if you have your planets and stuff building things, and you just click this and it'll take it to the next thing to finish. Hello, Dread. You ever played this game before? Because yes, it is an oldie for sure. And because the factory took 30 days to construct, we reached day 31 from day one. When you were young, <laughs> I really quite like this game. And there we are. We have no free population, so no project. And so then we just need to go back to the galactic map and continue time until we get more population. Which conveniently it does. Right. Currently I'm playing with the default AI. Which you would get if you run ascend.exe. But if you have the patch. And if you run in tag.exe instead. You'll get a harder AI. Which. If I was interested in actually seriously playing this. I'd definitely want to run the antagonist AI. But. And once again, no free population. And there, yes, species have special abilities, which sometimes are very powerful. Anyway. Now they're going to build a research building of some sort. That's a dumb place to put it, considering that there's two blue squares right there, but oh well. They didn't ask me. <laughs> so you can mouse over the blue circles and see what's available. As you research things, the circle will fill in with how much research it's finished. Or fill in, I think it fills in from the center, actually, and goes outward. And then the next thing, whatever is unlocked from that node will then appear above it. And you can rotate or move up and down the tree. Or 
Orbital structures is a very important one to get early because the shipyard lets you build colony ships and stuff. Okay, now they're going to build something on a blue square. Laboratories. Scientists have discovered orbital structures. Each time scientists make a discovery, we'll want to come back to this screen and choose the next topic. If you'd rather not manage research at some point, you can make your savage scientists choose new topics automatically. No. <laughs> Xeno archaeological dig is pretty cool if you have a dig site. Remember correctly, the dig sites give you a random technology, and it can be something some fairly advanced, which is pretty cool because sometimes you can get just some insane tech way ahead of when you could normally get it. And there we are, done the tutorial, and it automatically takes us back to the next tutorial. Building ships and exploring. Ended after bidding construction or first shipyard, the orbital structure makes building ships possible. So this, I think, teaches you how to build ships, well, how to design ships and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. A ship is an orbital structure. To build a ship, we click on orbital square, choose a ship as our next project. Okay. And of course, you have different sizes of ship. When you first start out, you get stuck with the crappiest little ones, but which you can't put much equipment on. Eventually you can build some pretty large ships. Of course, you have total crap for gear to start with as well. And the first ship you're going to want to build in every game is always going to have just engines and as many colony modules as you can cram onto the damn thing. <laughs> It's generally not worth, at least in my opinion, it's generally not worth sending out exploration ships just to explore. It's generally worth sending out a colony ship to explore, and then just dropping colonies everywhere you possibly can as you go. But, they're just having you build a crappy little... Well, actually no, they are going to put a colonizer on it. I would not design a ship quite this way, but it's not the worst. And then the game, they wait the game until the ship is done. Okay. Tell you about the ship screen, which I think I thought they already showed it off. Anyway. You can rebuild existing ships and all that fun stuff, which is cool and useful. Particularly for colony ships, because if you, um, if you use your colony ship up, then you want to send it back to refit to load more colonizers aboard. Discovered our first star system. Yay! So they order the ship to the first to a planet. And then they're able to create a planet colony. It is fairly straightforward.
starting off of the factory. I don't remember if I found it better to start with a factory or start with a, some kind of farm. I don't remember. I guess I'll have to figure that out when we're done with tutorials. Alright, now diplomacy. I think this is the last tutorial. Here you can see some of the different race portraits. All of them amazingly derpy in their own silly ways. Each of the races is fairly distinctly different as far as personality and such like. But anyway. Of course, you can ask about other species and other systems and such like. Diplomacy is not exactly very deep in this game, but it exists and it functions. And you can get some information about everybody else in the game. And who all they're at war with and all that fun stuff. What is winning? The answer depends on which species is asked. To be sure, extinction is to be avoided. Pathway to Ascendancy begins on your home world. Conditions for victory are several, and like exploring worlds in the night sky, are yours for the finding. Anyway. So. After finishing the tutorials, the game automatically dumps you here at the new game screen, and you can go from there. So we have minions, we have snowvendomas, which are generally uninterested in diplomacy with other species. I don't think the minions are either, for that matter. The Orpha, they are slothful, but highly intelligent. The Kambuchka, this by filtering rich, soupy atmosphere of their world. Okay. Ancient Royce, race of Torio, Torodial, or Toroidial mind bodies. They're masters of communication. Pose entirely liquid, severely injured, okay, they're ambitious and non intellectual. I don't remember what their different special effects are. The Balefids are cute little rodents, their disarming appearance belays their ruthless diplomatic skill. Also, they apparently have multiple tongues. Okay. These guys are kind of depressos, if I remember correctly. And here's the guys who drove them off their home planet. They're not very nice people. The Shivar are non organic life form, masters of dark forces of the universe, they harness arcane powers that sap and oppose all life. They're not very nice guys. Spirits of nature, they transformed their once barren homeworld into a lush paradise. Uh, brain parasite. Definitely nice guys. <clears throat> the Dubtax practice science in the most unsportsmanlike fashion. Nearly all of their knowledge is stolen. <laughs> Adept at camouflage, self protection, and survival. They keep their motives hidden and are cunning diplomats. And then we have the Meebs, large single-celled creatures that reproduce at will. They're extremely expansionistic, and communication with them is difficult. I think you get, like, tons of population bonuses and stuff for those guys. Oculons are chivalr chivalrous race of astronomers and mystics. They are fierce enemies and loyal friends. 
the Aberdell, Aberells, gangly tree people. They want more than anything to be left alone. Marmosians are territorial insects. They use complex pheromone signals to manipulate other creatures to protecting their territory. Each of these has a unique racial, racial ability, which I wish it told you what it was on this screen. Probe mist are dual like water creatures. Yeah. Six legged -like reptilians are fascinated with technology and gadgets, produce brilliant engineers and fleet captains. And then finally, the nimbaloids. They're composed of dense cohesive gases. Their ability to form tools of any shape and fit them in small spaces make them marvelous builders. I think you get some industrial bonuses and stuff from those guys. Oh, which of the many races do we want to play? Okay, let's do... Seven species, because why not? Um, we'll do a dense star cluster. Neutral atmosphere. And, oh, I don't know. We'll take a blue color. Um, as for our race, I think these guys get a bonus where it doesn't matter. Wait, is it? Here, let me, let me check something. Um... Let's just pick a race. Actually, here, let's start at the top. If I click begin new game, does it actually kick me into the game, or can I um, check to see what their ability is? Okay, I'd have to actually go into the game to see what their ability is. It gives this race, this page gives you a little bit of information about the race and their backstory. Their species of artificial life, machines that serve the purpose of their extragalactic master species, aeons ago the master species seeded the, their ancestor units of the minions on a planet chosen to accelerate their developmental programs. Their ultimate programming lay dormant throughout their history until reawakened by their cosmic masters. No one knows anything about the location of the masters or their purpose. They're made up of microscopic self-maintaining machines and they're able to simulate other life forms to obtain the rich mixture of elements they need for power and self-maintenance. They're efficient, non-stoppable at taking over worlds. They're built for strength and speed. No known species can stand against a minion in an unarmed confrontation. Anyway. So. Special ability. Your planet invasions always succeed. In this case, it's not an active special ability. It's just a passive effect. If I remember correctly, each race gets its own starter tech. Or no. Or no. Okay. Alright, let's pick a different race. See what they say. Okay. Law of just pack hunting predators in the woods and tundra plains, a very high gravity world. About the size of a bear, their stock build is deceptive since they are quick and graceful in motion. They appear to be opposing and massive on their own world. They prey much larger and tougher creatures, bringing prey down to overwhelming it with numbers and speed. Anyway. And special ability. Your ships all have double strength hulls. Okay. Or for grazing animals that evolved in a hostile world. Very bodies are very dense and tough. They're as happy in a pool of lava as pigs are to wallow in filth. <laughs> anyway. They have no known natural enemies. No particular difficulty in surviving in almost any environment. They have 17 sexes, so finding 16 mates of the appropriate sex is, a central pre is, a cent is their central preoccupation. <laughs> They're very intelligent and are able to perceive subtle causes of events and find levels of meaning. They're also happy to loaf once they have fulfilled their mating imperative. Okay, what's your special ability? They're unfazed by hostile environments. You can build on black planet squares. Remember correctly, they work just like white squares. In other words, they don't have any bonus. It's a pretty useful ability because you can build on otherwise unusable planets pretty easily. Well, let's look at the other races, see what they've got. 
involved in a dense, fog-like atmosphere of a large planet. They see by feeling the atomic vibrations of their surroundings. Uh, they're so sensitive to vibrations of living things that in the absence of their opaque in the absence of the opaque atmosphere of their homeworld, they're able to perceive very large concentrations of life at interstellar distances. And their special ability. You can see the alien homes. You can see all alien alien home stars, which is actually pretty useful. It'll get you a bit of a jump start on your explorer. But let's pick somebody else. Ancient race of toroidal mind bodies, deeply in tune to life and nature. After an early technological surge, they dismantled their cities and returned their world to its natural state, developing a culture devoted to enlightenment and living symbolic good nature. In other words, they're a bunch of hippies. <clears throat> anyway. They're telepathic communicators. You can talk to all of the races from the start of the game. Guess that gives you a bit of a diplomatic beginning. You can know who you're going to have to deal with quite early. You can see most of these special abilities are passive effects. And most of them are fairly meaningful. So these guys are basically living blow balls of fluid. They do not respect, respect abstract thought or communication with concepts. They see these things as fuzzy-minded and irrelevant. Irrelevant. They prefer to let their bravery and action speak for them. Anyway. Resilient. You can repair all damage to your ships. It'll take 60 days to mass the energy you need to use your ability. Okay. So this is a special ability that is active. The first one we've seen. Every 60 days you can repair your entire fleet to full. So if you're in the middle of a big battle and you're getting your ass kicked, you click the special ability button and poof. Suddenly, your fleet is back to top-notch shape again. Of course, any ships you've lost are still lost, but ships that aren't quite lost yet, back to fighting shape. Pretty powerful if you time it right. Uh, let's look at the rodents. Baffoids are cute little rodent-like organisms. They evolved on a hosp hospitable but competitive world where they developed the ability to disarm and win over their competitors. Anyway. They have a huge capacity for fun. They take nothing very seriously and are friendly and curious. Despite their naive and harmless image, Baffoids are deeply intelligent and highly perceptive. Anyway. And your special ability is... Come on. You can force all aliens to make peace with you. It's another active ability. It takes 100 days before you can do it. But if you ever want out of a war, it's a one quick, one click, get out of war free button. Pretty useful sometimes. The Swamp Marians evolved on the first planet of the binary star system. Dual star configuration influenced the development of dual duality inverse reality structures continually building the minds of swamp marians like electricity charging a capacitor. Anyway. They evolved in the same world same world as the or in the hell you're supposed to pronounce that. They share common ancestry, millennia ago, they betrayed each other, or whatever, drove them off their own world. Tiny number of ancestors, all modern ones, are able to flee their home world in space vessels that patch together in secret. Survive the dangerous passage through space by using their energy storage ability. Which gives us some hints as to what their special ability might be. They produce extra power. You can double the power of all of your ships. Another active ability. Very useful if you're in the middle of a big battle. You can pop that and all of a sudden your ships can do twice as much for a turn. Which is, or for a day. Which is pretty helpful. It's another one of those, if you use it at the right time, it makes a massive difference. 
And these are the guys that drove the previous guys off of their planet. They move with glacial slowness. They're near Sasaf, fungal animals that obtained high intelligence early in their evolution. Anyway. And they can teleport objects with the force of their will. They can teleport large objects across huge distances. Remember correctly, their special ability... Well, let's just go look at it. Able to repel. You can warp alien ships out of your colony's stars. So if someone's showing up with a fleet to kick your ass, you can just... Tell them to go away. <laughs> they will be back, of course, but you can tell them to go away for at least a little while. Okay, they're sorcerers, masters of dark forces from another universe. They're an inorganic life form. They follow most definitions of life, but are composed entirely of inorganic substances. They're able to harness an anti-energy that draws in and consumes energy and life forces. It is believed the Shivar come from another universe with different physical laws. They experimented with their arcane arts until they opened a way into this universe, and the pathway they opened led to a planet teeming with life. This was an unimagined bounty to the Shivar. Many of them came across to settle the world they found. They utterly devastated this world, destroying all the life on the planet by feeding on its life force. They aren't purposely hostile or evil, but their values are incomprehensible, and they do not recognize the creatures of this universe as living beings. All right. And their special ability? You can wipe out the power of all alien ships in systems you occupy every 90 days. Which means basically you can make an entire enemy fleet a sitting duck. Hopefully you have a fleet there ready to do something about it. That's pretty powerful. If you have a if you're ready about ready to fight a fee fleet, you can stop them in their tracks and then blow them away with your own fleet unopposed. The Govarum evolved on a barren desert planet in order to survive, they learned to preserve and nurture the scant resources of their world. I believe these people can take a planet and turn it into... Uh, well, we'll get. We'll see what we get there. Live apart from each other, each being a caretaker of a small region of the planet. The regions they care for are ever-changing and are not agreed upon, but are handled purely by intuition. Their power grew over time until much of their planet teemed with life. Given an already hospitable planet, they are able to transform it into a paradise. Every 150 days, you could turn your least populated colony into a rich world. That is just as powerful as it sounds. So every 150 days, you can take a barren planet and turn it into an absolutely amazing planet. You don't get to choose which one, but it's not too hard to... Low population planets are usually of crappy quality anyway. But kind of targets exactly what you want to target most of the time. Um, let's see. Let's look at the brain parasites. They're species of adaptive intelligent beings that evolved as thought parasites and later developed their own means of thinking. Before they became sentient, they would take control of the higher animals in their world, using their bodies and minds as hosts for their own needs. They are tiny, and their intellect is derived from the combined thought impulses of large numbers of them. There are trillions, and their combined thoughts form many thousands of distinct composite personalities. They no longer possess the ability to take over a host, but they retain the vestigial ability to exert a limited form of mind control at a distance. You can bump all ships and starlings backwards to their stars of origin, and that is for the entire galaxy. Very situational. Could be useful. But it's super situational. Anyway, let's check these guys out. These guys get an ability to um, steal technology, I think. They evolved in a world full of aggressive, competitive life. A Bengal tiger, raging bull elephant, and adult male gorilla were set down anywhere on this planet. It would be consumed in seconds. Although they're not especially aggressive themselves, they survive by excelling at hiding and watching. Their senses cover a vast spectrum of phenomena. They can tell that something is headed their way when it is still far away. They move like the wind, and their flexible bodies can fit in small holes and cracks e e easily. They are supreme stealers of research. 
and their special ability. You can steal any technology known by at least two other races every 63 days. So, you can't use that to get ahead in the tech tree, but you can use it to keep up. Which is useful. I wouldn't call it incredibly powerful, but it's useful. Masses of flowing fibers rearrange their bodies quickly, assuming a shape. We evolved in a highly predatory world where their camouflage and shape shifting were useful for catching their scarce, elusive prey before competing predators could. Also, they look weird as heck. Most of the races look weird as heck, but anyway. Eventually develop power to may repel competing predators and other threats as a telepathic extension to their camouflage ability. Okay, you can hide their entire planet from notice. And their special ability? You can make all your colonies invincible for one day. Which is pretty useful. You better have a fleet there to back up that invincibility, but you can stop somebody from bombing one of your planets for a very short amount of time. Emphasis on very short. Meebs are large single cell creatures that evolved in a warm, sunny world. They roll around collecting food on their surfaces, absorbing it into their bodies. They breed rapidly. Okay, although this method of reproduction is quick and the offspring are immediately self-sufficient, they are very attached to their young ones. Despite their alarming appearance, they are a sentimental species. And their special ability is they're very good at populating and increase the maximum population of all your colonies every 72 days. Which is pretty powerful, actually, because population controls a lot about what all you can do on a planet. You always want more population. Let's see, how many more races do we have? We got a shit ton of them to look at, yeah. I'm going to go through them all, because I don't remember what all their abilities are, and I'm curious. The oculants have only, extreme, have only the extremely acute sense of sight. They evolved on a thin atmosphere planet, orbiting a bright sun. Their culture is strongly astronomical. And they have amassed a great deal of knowledge about the galaxy. They are more mystical than intelligent, intellectual, and are considered superstitious by other species. They are endlessly fascinated with space and with other forms of life. Without yet achieving space travel, they have managed to communicate with other technological species from remote stars in this galaxy. Anyway. And their special ability? You can see all star lanes. Which is, as you may guess, incredibly powerful. Because you just know, like, at the start of the game, you know where all the stars on game are. But this tells you not only where all the stars are, but how they connect to each other. Which means you can make a lot of intelligent decisions about early game exploration and settlement that would otherwise be guesses. So you can begin to see most of the special abilities that a lot of the races have are pretty powerful. All right. Tree people evolved a huge Eden planet containing only plant life. They're peaceful, slow moving, and highly intelligent. They're unused to conflict. They can usually be found standing perfectly motionless for huge amounts of time, thinking their tree thoughts, pondering the world. At times, they conduct a planet wide ritual to tune their mystic energy vibrations to resonance. This ritual is exhausting and carthetic, restores the balance, calm the treasure. As a side effect, the ritual of mystical resonance sends out a spherical ripple in space and time causing star lanes to contract and close. And their special ability, you can block all star lanes entering your colonized systems. Uh, I'm not sure for how long, but you can do it. It'll take 92 days to do it. <laughs> so you. <laughs> Man, the guys who made this game, they took, they spent probably quite a bit of time coming up with a whole load of uniquely different races. All of them with interesting little backstories. 
which I'm not reading, they're up here. And descriptions, which I am reading down here. Marmosians are territorial, territorial insect-like creatures from the inner world of a hot sun. The mating pheromones evolved in a general purpose array of complex mood-altering scent modules, molecules, that allow them to manipulate the base emotions of other creatures. They are intellectually active but physically lazy, preferring to rely on the efforts of those they control. And their special ability, you can cause alien species to strongly dislike any species at war with you. So you always have um, <laughs> allies for any battle you're going to be involved with. Only three more. Deeply religious and philosophical race who spend much of their time in trance-like meditations exploring the inner space. When one with their god, Kronos, the Kronomest, float through time and space at a different rate than the, that experienced by those not ascended. They discovered a way to use this by to access star lanes and accelerate through them. They are largely composed of organic optical components and their intelligence consists of light rays bending and bouncing through their internal lenses and mirrors. Bright light heightens their mental acuity and allows them to focus more deeply on their communion with Kronos. Chronomist soci society is unstructured, a never-ending gathering called the Conclave where individual Chronomists come and go, reflecting light rays, defining and communicating the evolution of their culture and beliefs. The Conclave of the Chronomists is one of the, most, one of the wondrous sights of the universe, a never-ending intricate dance of colored light that every Chronomist joins for some part of its lifetime. And their special ability, you can change the rate of time passage. You can move quickly through star lanes. This is just a passive ability. You just, you move faster through a star lane than everyone else. Fairly useful. Not like earth shatteringly awesome, but just generally useful. Love Gadget's technology, they're able to discover major breakthroughs quickly when under duress, stress heightens their scientific abilities and amplifies their determination. In the recent past, a huge, highly advanced alien vessel passed through their system. The aliens discovered that star lane entry points in that system had drifted over time into an unstable configuration. They told the Kimechis or whatever they could not ex predict when the cataclysm would occur, but they were sure that the forces released would destroy the star and the planets orbiting it. Anyway, special ability, you can immediately achieve any discovery you are pursuing every night, every 89 days, which that can get you a new technology when you need it very badly, sometimes, pretty useful. And finally, the nimbaloids. They arose on a planet with a thick reactive atmosphere. They're composed entirely of dense... Did I reread this one? I think it did. Yeah, boost progress on all your colonies' projects. Take 68 days to mass the energy needed. Anyway, so they can build things quickly. Sometimes. Alright. Dense cluster. Seven species. Neutral atmosphere. Blue. Let's actually pick a race to play. Um, Orpha are kind of cool. Um, I'm tempted to play the lizard guys. I like these guys because they can take otherwise pretty barren planets and make them really good. And I like these guys because they can take otherwise barren planets and just use them anyway. But I don't think I'm going to play either of them for this because... It's just kind of a way to ignore a mechanic completely. I think we might take these guys. Just because they're kind of interesting. These guys are the lizards.
me go take these guys. Let's play giant single cellular organisms. Hey, amoebas. Okay. A sickness is growing amidst your people, a viral disease that ruthlessly strikes down children before they reach their first century. For the sake of your children, your species must find another home. You must undertake a vast project to escape the plague by spreading from your home world to the rest of the cosmos. Okay. 72 days, they can increase by maximum population of all colonies. Well, let's get started by getting our first project going. Uh, this planet is not going to give us a great start. <laughs> we have a black cell here, which you can't really build anything on. We can build transport tubes and that's it. Transport tubes exist. Here, I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit more. Transport tubes exist solely so that you can get, um, you can only build adjacent to something that is adjacent to another building. So, the only tiles we can build on are this one and this one. This is the only adjacent to our current building. So if we wanted to say build in this blue square, we could build a transport tube here and then build there. But I think we're going to start with an agri plot, which should give us more prosperity, which should give us more population. This will grow in 50 days, this will grow in 30 days. All right, so that's really all we can do at this point. Zero free population, there's no point going there because we can't do anything. And we got population in seven days instead of the um our many days it was telling us it was gonna take. Twenty days, I think. So this was well worth it. So the next thing to do 17 days population will grow, okay. Thirty days, we'll get a factory. So by the time the factory is done, we will have another population waiting. And indeed, we have free population. Okay, twelve days till population grows. Um, let's go ahead and try to get some research down. Actually, how long will it take to build transport tubes? Five days. Okay, so let's do that so we can get this blue tile. Okay, and then on the blue tile, seven days for population. Most buildings take up population to run. Transport tubes don't, they're free. They take population to build, but once it's built, it's done. So we'll build a laboratory. And we can use our special ability, which, what is that again? Oh, increase maximum population. We might as well go ahead and trigger that right now. Okay, go to research. Uh, yeah, I think we want to start with orbital structures. That'll take 25 days to research. We finished the laboratory. So we're getting, we're getting two research per day, two prosperity per day, and two industry per day. Now, um, seven days to population grows. Let's go ahead and build another factory. Okay, factory's completed. We have another population. 17 days to population grows. Let's go ahead and put down a transport tube right here to get to this red square. Okay. Um, 13 days population. We'll put down another factory. No, we won't. We're not going to do that. We're going to build instead an agri plot. 
because it's going to take less days for this to build than it will to grow population and we want to keep that relationship inverse. We want our population to grow first every time. Okay, so we have orbital structures researched. Which means now we can go to interplanetary exploration. Which allows us to actually build ships. So, yes please, I would like small and medium hulls, thank you. Anyway. Okay, zero free population, there's no point going there yet. Give it a couple days to get more population. Population will grow in 13 days. Factory in 10. No, we're not doing that yet. We will instead build another agri-plot. We're still not producing enough food to keep up. Okay, zero population. Now we have free population. Now it grows in 13 days. Still not enough. Um, I'm going to build a lab and then we'll build a connector and then we can put another agri plot in that green square. Okay. We'll might as well trigger our special ability. More max population is never a bad thing. All right. Uh, let's go for Conklin motor next and we need to Transport tube in four days, population grows in nine. Go to planet. Build an agri plot in ten days, population grows in five. Researchers have discovered some stuff. We can get a star lane drive. Go for the xenobiology first. Okay, so we need to build a shipyard soon, TM. And I think we're going to just build a couple of factories first, and then we're going to build a shipyard. Because we have some beautiful red squares right here we can just pack factories onto. Population in six. Factory in six. Awesome. After this, I think we're going to build... Yeah, we're going to build the shipyard now. Okay, xenobiology's been discovered. And this is the thing we really need. The colonizer. So this should be done in 17 days. Yeah, we'll be fine. Okay, good. Now, you can see how the, um, yeah, it's kind of trippy. The research tree is 3D. Starling Drive is probably the next most important thing. Actually, ooh. No, we'll do Starling Drive and then we'll go for artificial hydroponifier. Yeah, we'll pop our special ability one more time. Okay, go to planet. Now, let's start filling in these blue squares with laboratories. Actually, no, let's build a ship first. Okay, so we want a motor. We want a bit of energy. I don't think I care about shields at this point. Actually, wait, do I have... Okay, no, I don't. We're probably going to build a laboratory first. Because I want to have a star lane drive before we... Build another lab. 
FaceTime surfing, heck yeah. Okay, now we will do the artificial hydroponifier. We've got some nice ship improvements a little farther down in here. We'll worry about those later. Yes, we can now build our first ship. That's nice. Go to planet. We're going to do exactly that. Make it a medium. Give it the bare minimum needed to move. And fill the rest up with colonies. This is honestly a terrible ship design, but it's going to do the one thing it needs to do and do it reasonably well. All right, so this is... Colony Hulk number one. Okay. I'm just going to keep grabbing all the technologies as we go. Um, how far are we from building that ship? 26 days. Okay, we'll pop our special ability again. That ship's pretty expensive. Okay. The invasion module is used for invading enemy plants and capturing them. By the time that stupid ship is ready to go, we will um, be able to build ships that are twice as good. Okay, Colony Hawk is finally done. You leave orbit. Now. Um, we have plenty of population, so we don't need to start worrying about that just yet. Let's build some more factories. Get our industrial up a little bit. Okay, as for ships, you... Uh, there are no other planets in this system. So, let's go through that star lane and see what's on the other side. Get another factory down. Let's go ahead and build a one of these things. It's basically a better acre plot. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff here. Let's start settling planets. Okay, this planet is kind of terrible. However, we're going to settle it anyway. If I remember correctly, you put the colony base on a square, you do get some of that type of whatever improvement. We could put it here, which would basically give us a whole lot of not very much. Or we could stick it here and I think get a little bit of bonus. But let's put it on here, just because I don't remember exactly what happens, so let's find out. Okay, we still get the plus one, plus one that we would normally get. It doesn't matter that we're on a black square. A hundred days until completion. Population grow in 50 days. That's objectively a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because I don't want to have to worry about this place for a hundred days. Meanwhile, let's send this to the next system, in, or next planet in the system. Take that. Go to planet. This one's another not great system. Ooh, we can drop it right over here. Let's see. Is there any that have a red next to... No. Uh, well, we can do this and then build a connector. And eh, I don't know about that, though. 
We'll do this anyway. And we'll go ahead and build another one of those. You will leave more, but. And let's go to the next planet. Okay, this one's really bad, but we'll create a colony here anyway. Every little bit counts. On to the last one. And if you colonize all the systems in a, or all the planets in a system, ooh, this one's a good one. Okay, let's tap this one, I think. And indeed, if you check, we get two prosperity per day instead of one, because we built it on a green square. It's kind of worth building on a colored square, but it's also very much not worth building on a colored square, because if you do, you, um, you can't build a more powerful building there later. It doesn't really hurt anything, but we're going to start with a factory on this one because population grows in 25 days, 30 days to building completion. It's well worth doing the factory first. Okay, that is the last. Yeah, we own every... Okay, so that one returns back to our home planet. Uh, let me look at the galaxy map some. Okay, so this probably leads to there. Um, I'm guessing that one goes up to the third. Let's go to this one. Anyway. Hope one now has an artificial hydroponifier and four free population. Let's go ahead and give them some laboratories. We can crank through the research even faster. Um, we should probably build some more factories as well because I'm going to want to build another ship here and we're going to want as much um, industry as we can. And we have discovered another race. Will you trade Starling knowledge with us? Sure. Why not? Okay, so they're over here, we're over here. That's that race whose special ability is to be able to talk to others remotely. I think. I'm guessing, because we haven't run into them yet. And I don't think they've... No, they don't have a ship in our space. At least not that I know of. Um, build more factories. Build more factories. We can now use our species special ability. Which will come in handy. Okay, now let's build another ship. This is going to be another one of those colony hulks. Although we do have a better engine available. And we do have a better generator as well. That so should be a lot faster than the previous one. Hulk 2. 46 days to completion. Okay. Philadelphia 1 has completed a... Okay, so the factory will be completed in 10 days, 20 days to population increase. So let's not build a factory. 
let's build an artificial hydroponifier instead, which is going to take 34 days, but that's fine. Okay. How many colonizers does this thing have left, actually? Three of them? Okay. Well, that's unfortunate, but can't really be helped. We can't actually colonize the whole system on this trip. There are two red star lanes leading out here, so that's probably a good thing. Alright, great colony. This is actually a great place to build a colony. Um, we'll dump it right here. Yeah, it's kind of a terrible place objectively, but... We'll start with a factory. It's too small is the problem. It has... Um, it's got a bit too much green and not quite enough red be useful for that size. Okay, this place is kind of similar. We're just going to go ahead and cap the blue tile because... Yeah. Um... Let's build... another one of those. Okay. And then you go for the big planet. I think that's the last one we'll be able to settle here. Ooh. Okay. So this one has something we haven't seen yet. A Xenoarchaeological dig spot. Also, this one does not have any red tiles at all. But it's just a giant sea of white with a little green sprinkled here and there. Not bad. It's just... could be better. Anyway, 50 days to build the Xeno Dig? That's fine, we'll do it anyway. Because that'll give us random tech, and I want that as fast as possible. Okay, you, do you have any colonizers left anymore? No, you do not? Okay, so you're headed back home to get refed. Okay. It's arrived. We'll send it through to Hope. Now, as you may notice here, we have a another race's ship headed to our new system here. Which is not ideal. Okay, no population. There's no reason to be here. It will grow in 20 days. Okay. Philadelphia 1 has completed that. It'll grow in nine days, so let's go ahead and drop another factory. Arrived in Hope system with Hulk number one. We'll send it through to Hope one for refitting, which will happen as soon as the current ship is completed. Okay, discovered a new tech. Ooh, this gives us the research campus, which is an improved lab in 140 days. Um, let's actually take this one, which is only 35 days out. An unidentified ship has entered the Philadelphia system. We'll respond to their call. The brainworm people. We acknowledge their existence and go on our way. Okay, which one are you? Colony Hulk 2, leave orbit. Colony Hulk 1, oh, we don't have refitting available yet. Okay, so you're just going to have to hang out here for now. Um, Let's go ahead and build a hydroponifier. And we need to get refitting as soon as we can. Meanwhile, Hulk 2, lead by that star lane, please, and let's hope that they have not colonized that system, because I want it. Okay, Philadelphia 1, you grow in 12 days. Let's get you another hydroponifier. Hmm. 
Philadelphia 1 is probably going to be one of our main industrial centers quite soon. Okay, none of these systems are, or none of these planets are settled. Okay, so it looks like we have a little four-system empire here that's neatly surrounded by natural borders. Because the red star lanes are um, much longer than they appear on the map, basically. They're slow star lanes. You can get better tech later to go through them faster, but... Okay, great colony. Um, we'll dump it on that black square right there. And then we'll go ahead and build a artificial hydroponifier right there. Starting with a hydroponifier gives us a really, really slow start, but I like doing it anyway, just because, I don't know, it's fine, I guess. Do the same thing here. Once you get started, it helps you go a little faster. Not the brightest idea in the world, though. Builds massively in the end because you get that pop. Yeah. It'd probably still be smarter to start with an agri farm and then eventually tear it down and replace it, but... Nah. Okay. I made a mistake here. I forgot to send him to the next planet the last time. All right, hope one. Um, let's see. Let's not build on that. Let's not build research stuff yet because we're about to get the new lab. Um. Agriplot on white square. Agriplot on white square. Agriplot on green square. Okay, let's go ahead and abandon this one and just replace it with a hydroponifier. Probably a bit early to be doing that, but oh well. Okay, go to planet. Great colony. Ooh, there's a perfect place for it right there. Hydroponifier. Leave orbit. And then we go settle the last planet in the system. Uh, this one's another strong possibility for a good um, may I call it for a good industrial planet later. Okay, how many colony modules do you have left? Three, okay. Let's just send him to the red link and see what's on the other side. Construction of Xeno Archaeological Dig is complete. We have two free population. Um, since we have two free population, I think we're gonna start with a factory. Excavation analysis of the ruins has led to discovery of energy redirection. Which is well down the um, tech tree. It gets us the recaller. Um, the recaller, I think, is tech that... Um, Let's you instantly teleport, a, or not instantly, but teleport a ship back to your um, planet, I think. Well, we'll find out in a bit. Okay, Philadelphia 2. You can start building factories. 30 days to completion. Yeah, okay. That'll speed up in a hurry. All right, we still don't have the ability to refit ships, so that one's just sitting there in orbit. We do have the ability. No, we don't. That's for later. Okay. Um.
Do I want to just keep spamming out factories for now? I think so. Population grow in two days? Okay. We're going to have to replace those agri plots soon as well. Um, do I want to put down a transport tube here? You know what? I'm going to. And then we can build our first factory right there. Okay. Green square abandoned. We'll build a new hydroponifier there. Okay, you get a factory. Enough energy to use a special ability. Okay, so this is a great time to do this because it affects all of our planets, including ones that have relatively low pop caps. Okay. This place could be a really rich planet by the time I'm done with it. Um, more factory. Discovered momentum deconservation. Okay. Wait. Why was I researching that? I was going to do hyperlogic, I thought. Oh yeah, I was like, oh no, I'm going to do this one because it's less days. Sure. Alright. Go ahead and build in a factory. Um, more factory. Six days growth. Six days to factory. Okay, we'll build more factory then. All right. I'm going to probably abandon those agri plots eventually. For now, let's just build more factory. Three days, seven days to grow. Okay, yeah. Let's try to cap. We'll try to get to this so we can cap it with a new thing as fast as possible. We're probably going to end up just building a bunch of, um... A bunch of agri stuff off green tiles, but I'd rather not if I don't have to. Because I want to turn that into industrial hub, even though it's not an ideal for that. Five days for population growth. Five days for factory. Don't mind if I do. Okay, how many days do you grow? Four days? Yeah. That's no big deal. Alright, let's build another hydroponifier. 13 days. 10 days for population. Okay, good. Uh, this one we started with a factory because he had a bunch of population built up because it took time for the uh, Xeno dig. But now we need a hydroponifier. 20 days, 50 days to build that. Okay, we should have at least two, maybe three population waiting for us when we get there. Um, let's pop a hydroponifier on it for now. That place isn't gonna be great for anything. It's way too much green. We could just build factories on the green, but it hurts me to do that. Uh, let's put down another factory here. Okay. Build some more factories. So the early game, you spend a lot of time just passing time. The late game, even the mid game, you spend an awful lot of time giving orders one right after another when it tells you to go to planet. <laughs> There's one thing that makes this game nice and easy. It just presents you with a long list of decisions you have to make. And you make those decisions. In this case, it's probably time we get more population, so let's build that there. We're running out of green squares. Let's use a white one. 
Okay. Five days population growth. Um, we'll build another factory over here. And then that'll give us a string of green down here that we can start covering for more population growth. Okay, zero population, we don't care. Three population, we do care. Yeah, okay, that's good. This one, build its first factory. For this one, we just finished a hydroponifier. It takes four days to grow population. Um, factory will take three days. We probably should build another hydroponifier instead. Okay, Philadelphia 1 has free population. It'll take eight days for the population to grow, so let's get a hydroponifier down, which will take 12 days, so keep us ahead of the curve on that. Um, six days for population growth. Let's go ahead and drop another factory. Um, five days for population growth. I think I'm just going to build another factory here. Yeah, this is a very not great system, so eventually we'll be able to terraform at least a little bit, so that'll come in handy. Um, let's actually build a transport tube right here, because I'd like access to these blue squares so that I can just explode research as soon as we get... Uh, the better research building. I don't want to waste a lot of time. I mean, it'd be a smart thing to do at this point to start building a lot of labs. But also, I don't want to build labs because the next technology we research is going to give us the nicer lab. So it feels like a waste. It's probably not a waste, but it feels like it. Go ahead and get more factories down, though. Also, we're running out of pop cap here. Which means we're probably going to have to do something about that. And I'd rather not have to if I don't have to. But. Well. There's not a whole lot we can do about that right now. Population will grow in one day. Okay, we can get more factories down then. Okay. Go ahead and get down another hydroponifier. We've discovered a new system and it's owned by another race. So we don't want to do anything to this place. We just want to leave. Because we don't want to piss them off. Alrighty, now. Um, go ahead and build another factory over here. Really? Okay, is there anything I can build on these cup transport tubes? No. I kind of almost don't want to do anything here. Because I want to save my remaining population space for labs. It's, I don't think it's going to be worth building outposts. Because outposts take one pop, I think outposts take one population and provide two. So technically they're worth building. Uh, screw it. You know, let's put a couple outposts down. We're going to want to replace them with something better as soon as we can. But 
Okay. Back to one of the little jewels of the Philadelphia system. Um, population growth is still going gangbusters. Let's drop another factory. Bonifier. That'll help keep my head. Uh, this little place is not doing so well, on the other hand. Unidentified ship. It's Bafflids. Nice to meet you. Um, there's no real point to building more hydrophonifiers in this place. Let's go ahead and put a factory on a green square. It makes me sad to do, but... Okay. You can get another factory. you. This place doesn't need much prosperity because we're not going to be doing much here. We just don't have the tiles for it. So we might as well build as much factory capacity there as we can and call it a day. Let's put in another outpost. We have 88 days remaining on that research. I really should increase my research. You know what? Screw it. Let's start building labs. I hate to do it, but... Okay, you... Let's get another artificial hydroquantifier down. Um, This place is basically worthless, so we might as well go ahead and build a lab here. It's probably eventually what's going to be anyway. Um, we've got the excess population, so let's build a factory here. Okay. Hold off on building more labs here. Instead, let's go ahead and build a factory. Because we're going to want it for the shipbuilding. No free population. Wait, did one of you assholes... Those little scumbags settled one of my... Well, fine. Little bastards. Oh well. Go ahead and build another factory. Factory's 15 days, population growing 25 days. Uh, no. Let's build a hydroponifier instead. Let it give it some time to cook, so to speak. Um. Fine, I'll build more labs. Okay, now we can use our special ability again, which will be helpful. How much max pop did that give us on hope? Two, it looks like. Okay. That's not a huge amount, but pretty useful. Okay, this place needs a... I'm just going to keep building factories here. Let's keep dropping labs here. Get that research done. Go ahead and build another factory. Okay. And you get another lab. Zero free populations, I don't care. Okay, you grow in two days. 
Get him another factory then. Okay. Back to the home world. We'll build yet another lab. Two free population. Uh, let's put another factory down here on a green square. Okay, you get a factory, your first one. You get your first factory as well. All right. Population will grow in two days. Um, put down a transport tube there so we can get to this red square over here. You get another factory. Eventually we will get an upgrade for the factory. That's going to take a while before that happens though. Um, for you, I'm going to abandon these two white agar plots. And I'm going to build another artificial hydroponifier on that green square. Also, we're just going to abandon this ship because it's unlikely we're actually going to ever refit it. Even once we had the ability to do so. Get the new factory down. I don't think we can build the refit dock. No, we can't. All right, so you get to be a factory. You get your first factory as well. Okay. Uh, do I build another hydroponifier here? Yeah, I think I do. Okay. Let's go ahead and put in a transport tube. You get another factory. Population grows in four days. Okay, good. Next thing we need to build though is a hydroponifier. You get a lab. Research is done in 22 days. All right, um, let's build another outpost. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what did I build that transport tube for? Was it just to get us closer to this green one? Must have been. Um. Yeah. Let's build a factory right here. Then we'll build a tube there and we'll build a hydroponifier in the green. Eight days, population growing nine. Okay, that's reasonable. Okay, you. Population grow in 50 days. Let's waste some of that time by putting down a couple of transport tubes. This place is just kind of terrible. So we're not going to waste any time getting our population growth up on that. We'll just let it grow slowly. Um, for this one, let's build a couple of tubes here to get to the green and the red here. Okay. That's right, I was wasting time here with building tubes. Unfortunately, you don't waste much time, but... Okay, then you... Get three factories and you're done, basically. 
Although eventually I'll have to come back and remember to check out my systems when I get upgrades for the factory. Actually, you know what? Let's build a lab. And then we'll build a hydroponifier. Okay, you get a hydroponifier. It looks like you need. Um, for you, I'm going to go ahead and put in an outpost to get our population up some. And then let's go ahead and build another lab here. Okay, no free pop. You don't really have free pop. Building a shipyard here would be a dumb idea because we don't have much factory capacity. So I'm just going to build orbital defenses instead. Alright. Now. Build another outpost. I want the population here to be nice and high, ready for the science coming science boom. Speaking of which, you get a factory, and then I'm going to... No, wait. First, let's build an earth, a hydroponifier down there. All right. You are ready for your second factory. Finally, hyperlogic. Go to research. Okay, we can do cloaking. I'm not overly enthused about. Are any of these particularly amazing? Yes. Orbital docks allows you to refit ships. Um, these are various improvements for ships. Scientist takeover allows you to convert all production to research. It is the project you want your system your once you've finished building a something up into some into a um, productive system you want to start building scientists takeover so you're not wasting your production basically or you could do alien hospitality which is the same thing except may, makes other aliens like you better uh, i think at this point Let's do molecular explosives because it's a shorter one. Okay, now. And this is also why you want to build heavily into industry instead of building heavily into research. I mean, building into research is great. But if you build heavily into industry, then you have industrial powerhouses that can also do research. Not quite as efficiently as if you built purely into industry, but. Or purely, purely into research but it works out okay you get a second factory you get a second factory okay you get a factory on the red square and then we will probably build something here and something something to try to get to that blue square or we'll try to build over to those red squares Depends on what I think is right when we get there. Okay, Colony Hulk number two. I need you to return to Philadelphia. Hello? Oh, I clicked the wrong ship. There you are, behind them. I need you to go to Philadelphia. Okay, so we just finished building a laboratory here. Guess what we're going to do? That's right. We're going to rip it out, and we're going to replace it with a research campus. Okay, you... You get a second factory. Alright, now for you, we're going to start building research campuses by the bazillion. And then we're going to start tearing our labs out and replacing them with more research campuses. 
here. Population growth in three days. Um, let's build toward the green. And we'll start with a factory. Okay, you got an orbital shield. Build a second one. Okay, you have two factories. Population grows in 10 days. We'll give you a second hydroponifier. Same here. Transport tube. Um, I'm going to build another hydroponifier. Okay, for you, I'm going to actually build two hydroponifiers here. Because when you're going to need the population growth, because this place is about to go nuts on industry. You get a couple factories. Um, research campus. Yeah. Eventually you start getting buildings that are combo buildings. They give you two things at once. So like you'll find some that'll give you both growth and research and research or growth and various things like that. Which is pretty useful. Uh do I want another hydroponifier? No, I want more factories for now. Okay. Two orbital shields. Let's go ahead and add a missile base. We currently are completely lacking in a navy, so hopefully nobody declares war on us. Okay, go through Atropos. Hold another hydroponifier. Special ability time. Okay. More factories. Yep. As long as we're staying ahead of the growth rate, we're good. Okay. Missile base is finished. We'll build another one. Okay. Um. We'll just cap this place off with two factories and call it a day. Okay, so this place is done. They can't build anything else except orbital. But we'll leave it at that for now. It has no population. Go ahead and give them a factory. Molecular explosives have been discovered. Um, I'm pretty sure that in the not too distant future, I'm going to want scientists take over, but also that's a pretty long project. Screw it. I'm doing it anyway. Okay. No free populations. I don't care. Um, Build one more hydroponifier and then we're just going to go nuts with factories. We'll do another hydroponifier here. Okay. Are there any of these damn places that haven't been captured by somebody? Yes, that one. Be 
because it is a total wasteland, not worth anything. But you know what? I'm going to cap it anyway. But even little wastelands like this can be used for something eventually. If nothing else, you can turn them into... Um, there you are, columns. Little tiny defense stations. Okay, now let's just keep spamming out research camp campuses. You get another factory. Yep, okay. Um, there's no point in getting any more population growth here. We'll start upgrading the labs that are here to research campuses. Okay, you get another missile base. Eventually we'll get much better defenses than the missile base, but... We'll make do with what we have for now. Okay, you get an orbital shield. Uh, more factories. Yeah, but first we're going to build a transport tube so we can get to a red tile. Um, build another transport tube so we can get to a pair of red tiles. Boom. Population going eight days, six days to completion. We'll probably build a... Um, Hydroponifier somewhere. Okay, you get a factory, which will unlock a nice green tile. Can't wait till we have terraforming available. Pretty late game tech, though, if I remember correctly. Okay, let's abandon that lab. Build a research compass. Campus. Whatever. I know pronounce word good. Um, another hydroponifier. We'll get two. We'll get one there and one there, and then we'll start going nuts on factories again. I think. Speaking of going nuts on factories, let's start building factories over toward these red tiles. Changing technologies. Uh, sure. Did we get anything from that? Yes, actually we did. We got orbital docks. Okay. I suppose. Time to start removing the existing laboratories and replacing them with better ones. Okay, you get another factory as well. Build another orbital missile base. All right, we should probably start building some better ships too. Building factories here. No populations, I don't care. Go to planet. Um, let's build a transport tube there for now. And we'll start building factories over toward those red squares. Okay, now we can build some beautiful factories on red squares. Uh, let's go ahead and cap this with hydroponifier for now. 
Unidentified ship. Respond. We need your help spreading death through the Atropos system. We tend to stay away from combat unless necessary. I don't like that they have discovered us. We're probably going to have to start building ships soon. Actual warships. Let's see. Population growth in eight days. Factory in eight days. Keep wiping out labs and replacing them with campuses. Okay. Get a transport tube down. You get another orbital missile base. You get another factory. This place should probably get its own orbital infrastructure. Soon, TM. Small planets don't deserve to have shipyards. Um. Let me think. Let's build more factories here. And you... Go ahead and give them a hydroponifier. Yeah, it's high time for it. Okay, you... Population grows in 10 days. Um... Put a factory over there. Okay, now. Get them a transport tube right there and we can cap this. Our Mosians have become extinct. Oh, uh, okay. There was some kind of war going on somewhere. Okay. Cap this with the research campus. What's our growth? Population in one day? Okay. Avi's going to play Boring Gate 3. Does Avi know that you call it Boring Gate 3? <laughs> um, okay, let's wipe out that lab and build a new one. Go ahead and get a hydroponifier down here. One last orbital missile base. Before we run out of population. Our special ability should be off cooldown soon, TM. Build some factories here. 19 more days. Um... Let's just start spamming labs out. I think this is going to be a research planet. It's got a lot of blue. We'll just build a few factories and a whole bunch of research on it, I think. This place, on the other hand, is going to have as much industry as we can manage, and that's where we're going to turn it into a... Uh, okay. And then we're going to turn it into a defense outpost. Okay, what do you got? I was building factories here. Repopulation. Um, population growth in 10 days.
Let's build. I'll put two hydroponic fires, one on the white and one on the green beside it. Because we need more population growth on that planet. It's large enough that it deserves it. Okay, so this one has 45 days for population growth. Yikes. Yeah, we need more population growth before we can start building orbital. Probably should have built at least one other hydroponifier on that one already. Oh well. Um, as for you, your population growth is fine, TM. Let's keep building up its industrial. That one might become a shipyard world someday. I'll have to think about it. Okay, speaking of shipyard worlds. This one's not really industrial powerhouse I'd like it to be, but. Okay. We're running low on population. Which means I should probably start spamming out outposts in some of these white tiles. I really hate to do that though because outposts suck. All right, more factories. If you look at our planet list. Um, I don't remember if you can sort this list. But you can definitely tell who the industrial winners are. Philadelphia won. Why do you have no project? Oops. Oops. Okay, I better check. Make sure nobody else has free population and no project. Like no project, no free population, that's one thing. No project with free population, that is something entirely different. Okay, so it was just that one that somehow fell through the cracks. Oops. Um. Okay, so here the problem is not population growth rate, it's population cap. Let's keep spawning out, spamming out factories for now. Population growth in two days, factory complete in three. This is definitely one of our industrial powerhouses. And this, you know. Okay, let's go ahead and build a shipyard in orbit around Philadelphia 1. Okay. You have four hydroponifiers. Yeah, okay, more factories. More factories. Okay, now we can use our special ability. That's good because max pop in every single planet? Hell yeah. Um, you get another hydroponifier. Pop growth in five days. That's good. Keep building more labs here. Campuses. Replacing our labs. Okay, four hydroponifiers, so that means we want more factories. Yeah, sure, we'll trade Starling knowledge. We've explored very little, so... Speaking of explored very little... ETA 52 days in that star lane. And it's been in there for who knows how long already. That's what red star lanes are like with slow ships. And when I say slow ships, yes, that ship is very slow. It um, only has a single star drive. By the time it gets there, there'll probably be nothing worth doing there anyway. Wherever there may be. 
we have had war declared on us. And they would like to do a technological exchange. Uh, sure, why not? I don't think we got anything out of that. At least nothing particularly notable. We're still 46 days out from scientists take over. All right. We're going to need to build a navy somewhere. Six industry per day. This place is not enough to really turn into a shipbuilding planet at this point. I'm going to build an orbital shield, though. I'd rather not be invaded, thank you very much. You can also have an orbital shield. Let's get some kind of defenses going. Um... Nine per day. Get into the larger artificial hydroponifier. Okay, go to system. A hostile ship belonging to the Shivar has just arrived. You can't see what's on it because we don't have any scanners. Oh, please don't invade me. Um, okay, we have an orbital shield up. Build an orbital missile base. Okay, this is the place where we built all the missile bases. Do I want more shields? Yes, I do. I want two more shields with our last remaining two population. Okay. I'm just going to put up shields in every, every one of my planets that doesn't have one already. Okay, we have a shipyard in Philadelphia. Get a shield to go with it. All right. Here at the home world, we're going to build ourselves a ship. It's going to be a medium design. And it's going to be an actual warship. Okay, what's the recaller do? Move instantly, arrive immediately at its home system. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, go straight home. These things allow you to view internals of ships. Okay, we need a star drive. There's no point putting any invasion modules or anything on it. We don't really have a whole lot of Go ahead and put in a couple concussion shields and then we'll fill the rest up with quantum singularity launchers which are not ideal but if we get close we can probably make somebody hurt a little bit We're going to call it the please go away. All right. Um, growth in one day. Let's go ahead and give them a quick factory. Okay. You guys can have another orbital shield. Okay. You guys can have another overall shield. Give them an orbital missile base. Uh, 
population growth in four days. Let's go ahead and give them an orbital shield. Okay. Start building orbital missile bases there. Now. Ah, uh, yeah, you should get an orbital shield as well. Okay, that Shivar ship is still here. Hey, that wasn't very nice of you at all. At least we could fire at it. Um, okay, we need to start building outposts here. Can't tell anything about that ship, so I don't know if I'm even hurting it. This place is fine because it has a... Um, wait, no project? What? Why in the hell? How in the hell did you end up with no project? Okay. Well, you get an orbital shield. Keep the bad guys away. Okay, four days until we get... Oh, no. They took out the shield there. Well, that's no good. We'll have to build another one. No, not a shipyard. Missile base. Okay. Okay, you need to wait for population. You get a second shield. Okay. This place gets another shield. You get another shield. You get a shield. You should have, you already had one. Unidentified ship entered the hope system. Okay, it's those dudes. Okay, you've had an outpost built. Go ahead and build another outpost. Okay, you get your last shield. You... Um... Let's start building factories here again. Um, build a hydroponifier. Okay, you get a second orbital shield. You get your first orbital shield. Okay. Um, go ahead and give you an orbital missile base. Boom. Okay, we have gotten rid of the Shivar ship that was in our system.
We're still at war with the Shivar, so let's continue building up our defenses. And our economy. Okay. Let's get an orbital missile base down. You get another shield. Okay, you get a shield. Come on, there we go. Yeah. I believe we are set to defend ourselves here. If we must. Okay. Um, do I want to build another couple? No. Let's start spamming out factories now. Okay, how long till you get population? Four days. We should probably take a break from building shields there and build a hydroponifier. Oh, well, that place finally finished its first hydroponifier. Let's crank out a... Oh, yeah, but that was the one we settled relatively recently. Um, let's get you to get a... Oral Missile Base to go with your shields. Okay. We've completed a factory here. Go ahead and build another one. Okay. Um, you. Let's go ahead and drop a hydroponifier here. Finally, we've discovered level logic. That is the one that gives us scientists to take over. Let's do cloaking next. Unfortunately, you can't really see what the things do until after you research them. But anyway. I remember correctly, the molecular disassociator is a pretty good weapon. Engineering retreat. I think this is a building that gives you both production and laboratory. It's not amazing, but it's pretty okay. Getting their orbital muscle base down. Okay, for you. Get more factories. Um, yeah, more factories. This place is down to having one population left, which means we really should build more outposts. Um, another orbital missile base. 26 more days in our special ability. Yeah, let's keep going in factories for now. You get an orbital missile base. You get a second orbital missile base. Construction of the ship, please go away, is complete at Hope 1. Okay. Let's continue replacing our laboratories with better, fancier ones. Tell the please go away to leave, or leave orbit. We're going to keep it here in the home system so we can quickly send it to either of these systems should enemies appear. Okay. Not sure if that's a Shivar ship about to arrive or not.
Doesn't look like it. Okay, good. Um, you have basic defenses up. That's good. We don't need any more of those yet. Um, let's start replacing laboratories with not that with campuses. Okay, let's build another outpost here. All right. Keep building our orbital defenses on this planet. Um, more factories. Let's go ahead and get down another hydroponifier. Let's get into the missile base. I think that's a good idea. Okay, no population. Now there's population. These guys probably should need to get another hydroponifier. I had to guess. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Basic defenses are up on this planet. Um, get a factory down. Okay. Build more research buildings. Um, let's go ahead and build an orbital dock. So we can refit. Not that we have enough ships to bother with that right now, but at some point in the future, perhaps. Research campuses. Keep replacing research campuses back here on the home front. Okay. Another factory. What about you? Let's build more factories. All right, we're having a bit of population trouble on a lot of our planets right now. We're hitting our pop cap, which is not ideal. Although we will be able to expand that soon TM with um, our special ability, I hope. Get another orbital muscle base there. Yeah, okay, you get another orbital muscle base. Get another factory. Let's do another planet check to make sure there's no slackers. Okay, this one has no free population. We can do scientist takeover even without free population. So this will convert some of their industry to research at a pretty good loss. Research progress increases by an amount proportional to its industrial output. We're making five industry, it's turning into one science point, which isn't great, but otherwise this system would just be sitting here doing nothing, so it's worth it. <clears throat> and more importantly, if anything gets damaged or destroyed, like, we could start slowly replacing what it has here with labs. But if anything got damaged or destroyed, it'd be really hard to repair it. 
or replace it. It would take a long time. So this way we maintain industrial output without losing it, basically. Okay. Now, you get a second factory. Most useful planet under my little empire. So like this place has zero free population. Technically, it would make sense to go there and set its um no, here. Technically it makes sense to come here and set its project to scientist takeover. Actually for some reason I think it doesn't alert you if you do that when it gets free population. Let's find out. Because that place is basically done anyway. We'll just have to remember to check on it later. And if we didn't get an alert for free population, then... Uh, oh yes. Usability. Okay. Now. How many free population slots did that give us to the ones that were... Okay, like this one that was Building Scientist Takeover because I had... was completely full. Now it has two free slots. So it looks like every single time we use our ability, we get two free slots. That's the second time I've seen that number. So I'm pretty sure that's confirmed now. Two free slots to every single planet in the Empire. That's pretty good. Okay, you. Um, what's... Since you're a shipyard planet, let's keep increasing your industrial capacity. Okay. Continue replacing our labs with better labs. Um... Go ahead and get another hydroponifier down. Okay. You. Um. I'm debating whether or not I want to put down two more missile platforms. And then just leave it one population open for shipbuilding. Or... Actually, I don't know if I need to leave population for shipbuilding or not, I don't remember. Or if I just want to build two more factories. And then leave a population open for shipbuilding. Or... If I want to pop down some more outposts. I kind of hate outposts. We get a much better version of them later. At which point, I'm going to tear all these out anyway. I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. We'll build a couple of orbital missile bases. Oh, okay, you do still get a warning when they have scientists take over set. So I'm just going to have to go ahead and remember that and actually make sure to go through and that scientist takeover and every planet that's not otherwise busy. Looks like everybody's currently busy though. Alright, good. Zero free population? We'll just go there and set scientist takeover then. This place is producing 16 industry per day. Ten re that turns into 10 research. Admittedly, two of that research is coming from this. Research campus. Actually, it's probably three research coming from this. It's not Blue Square. I think Blue Squares are plus one. I don't remember. Okay, you are... I'm going to go ahead and build a research campus here as well. That should tell me. In 15 days. Okay, you have free population. Go ahead and build the last orbital missile base. Orbital missile base complete. Has five free population. 
Um, let's go ahead and build some more factories then. This place might end up losing some of its um, current con orbital construction and turning into a shipyard base later. Okay, you get scientist takeover because you're otherwise busy. Eleven industry gets turned into four research. I think it's just half rounded down, maybe. No, that's not can't be right either. I don't know what it is exactly. You get another orbital shield. You get another orbital missile base. We're technically still at war with the Shivar. Okay. You build scientist takeover. You build another orbital missile base. Okay. Build more research campuses. Okay, you cannot build a ship without population. Good to know. We'll build scientists take over there for now. This is a shipyard system. Eventually we're going to want to build some ships, I'm sure. That one, this one's going to be a tiny little rock, an angry rock with missiles on it. <laughs> um, go ahead and build a couple research campuses there. Get rid of the last couple laboratories on the home planet. Okay. Uh, this place has free population, but it doesn't have anything to do with it. So, we'll worry about that later. Researchers have discovered cloaking. Yay. Um... Did cloaking actually unlock anything else? I don't think it connects to anything, just kind of a side area. Engineering retreats 161 days. Industrial mega facility, 50 days. Okay, we're doing that next. That'll replace all of our factories. And I do mean all of our factories are getting replaced by industrial mega facilities eventually. Okay, so this place has free population. We're going to leave it set on scientist takeover, I think. I'm not ready to build more ships yet. Okay. Uh, for you... Let's build more factories. Okay, Nacius 2 has free population. Um, what do I want to do here? I think we're just going to leave it on scientist takeover and leave it alone for now. Keep building more research campuses. Want to get that research turbocharged. Um, you can have a research campus too. Damn it, what did I accidentally build there? No. Research campus. There we go. It's like Service Cloaker makes plant service practically invisible to alien ships, and the shield makes it so that they protect against alien invasions. Space Shield. It just keeps alien ships out of orbit. 
So technically you don't need surface shields as long as you can keep your space shields alive. Which, good luck. I guess that's why you have your own space navy. Wait. Did I click out of that without, oops. Without giving it a task? Yes, I did. Oops. Um. Build more factories. Wait, why am I building? Oh, well, screw it. It'll take a little while before we get the good. Um. More labs. Okay, you get a missile base. You get a missile base. What's the orbital cloaker do again? Disguise structures orbiting colony, rendering them invisible to alien ships. I don't remember that being terribly useful, but it might actually be. Alright. One last laboratory to replace. This thing's producing 51 research per day. Pretty good. Alright, you are growing in eight days. Let's give you another couple missile bases, I think. Okay, you finally built your first orbital shield. Congratulations. Build your second one, please. Research campus. Why don't you just go ahead and build another one of those? This place is producing 20 research a day. Almost half of what our home planet is producing. Okay. I'm going to build another missile base just because it offends me that there's only three there. Okay. Yeah, with the research campus. Okay. Um I'm going to build a factory right here, I think. All right, it's time to start upgrading the orbitals of the home planet. So let's start with an orbital talk. You are going to get a factory. You're going to get a missile base. About the time I get missile bases built on everywhere, we'll have an upgrade for the missile base. It'll be time to build something else. <laughs> About the time I get factories built everywhere, it'll be time the factory research will finish and we'll, it'll be time to build something else. I'm going to do another hydroponifier down there. Let's do another research campus. Okay. New missile base. This is one of our small angry rocks. They exist to do nothing but hold lots of missiles and stare angrily at space. <clears throat> now, we're not bringing freedom and liberty to anyone else yet. We have prevented someone else from bringing freedom and liberty to us, but I am going to go ahead and build some transport tubes right here. Get us over that red tile.
which will then cap with a factory. Hmm. Barbell docks have finished on the home planet. Go ahead and give it an orbital shield. Okay, this place has been factoried up. Let's go ahead and give it another missile. Why are we building so many missile bases? We're currently at war with another species. Although they only sent one ship after us and we haven't seen any of the rest of their stuff since. Probably nothing to worry about. Um... Build the transport tube there for now. Okay, another small angry rock. Let's give it its first actual weapon. Okay. This place is going to be a research center for sure. Okay, you get another orbital shield. And your last population is going to get spent on another missile base. How far out are we on our research? Three days. Okay, good. But no, let's not do that, because by the time that finishes, we'll have the upgrade for it available. Um, build another missile base. You get another missile base. Okay. I am going to give you one more hydroponifier. Researchers have discovered positron guidance. Hi Hyperpower plant. Uh, what's that one do again? Well, I'm going to research it anyway. We're skipping some researches way up here that we should do. Hyperpower plant sounds useful, so I want that. Okay, now. Industrial mega facility. Self-reliant production plants, industrial output is greater than that of a factory. I think it's double that of a factory specifically. This factory is plus one, I think. I think this is plus two. So, everywhere that has factories, you're getting industrial mega facilities. And let's go through our planet list and look for anyone who's doing scientist takeover. And do the same to them. Looks like there's not many of them. Our lovely little empire is pretty small at the moment. Let's do even let's even do it to our little angry rocks. Those will be very helpful for the future. to completion on that one. Fourteen days on that one. Um, build a new one over there. Okay.
Special ability, hell yes. That gives every single colony in our empire two more population. Very valuable. Actually, go ahead and increase your industrial might first. Um, you get a research campus. Okay. Let's just keep replacing stuff for now. Yeah, this has got turbocharger industry. Wow, it's literally gonna double it once we're finished replacing everything. Which, shock and surprise, turns out to be pretty good. Let's go ahead and start replacing stuff instead of building new. Technically, building new is better, and then replacing is better once you're out of space, but... I don't care. Unless it's got, like, red, squ red squares left uncovered. That's yeah, probably worth it. In this case, we'll probably build one or two. Oh, what do we got here? Yeah, let's keep building up the home world. Okay, I can't see what the value is of that. Um, keep on replacing. Keep on replacing. I don't need that sea of green for anything, but. Uh, what do we got here? Build another industrial mega facility there. One to two industry per day on this planet. I'm probably going to want to rip out all this stuff and make it into a shipyard planet. If I keep building it up. Like this this shipyard planet is only 20. Although it is going to be more once I uh, replace all these factories. This one's 20 per day. This one should probably be one of my shipyard planets as well. Honestly, every planet that has any reasonable amount should probably be made into a shipyard just because in case of emergency, I can build a ship there. Okay. The more of these industrial mega facilities we get down, the faster and the faster and faster it'll the replacement will go. Which I guess is fairly unsurprising. Okay, research discovered subatomics. Uh what was subatomics going to give me that I wanted? Hyperpower plant, that's right. I need to figure out what that does. Gravity distorter. Okay, so none of the stuff that's out here is incredibly worth getting before we uh, get earlier text that we skipped. Uh, strong force weakening we'll grab. Okay. 
What does the hyperpower plant do? Generating power for all the colony's industry and significantly increase the colony's entire industrial output. There is no need for more than one on any colony. Okay. So we want one of those for sure on every single colony. And I cannot build it on a black square, of course. Building those is our new priority. Okay. Philadelphia 2 has 23 research or 23 um, industry right now. I am going to build a hydroponic, not hydroponic, a hyperpower plant on a green square. Which shouldn't affect anything, I don't think. Hyperpower for everyone. Let's see, it was 22, I said. You know what? I should just try yeah, to screw it. Uh, let's go ahead and cap the green square with another one. Just because I don't need that many green squares in this planet. Same thing here. Hyperpower plant in a green square. Well, they can't be bothered. 22 industry here at the main home planet. And I'm going to give it a hyperpower plant right there. Which will be done in 10 days. the transport tube and then we'll put the hyperpower right down here yeah hyperpower thirty three per day wasn't it twenty something before we built this plane I think it was That's pretty good. Hope 1. Oops. Hope 1 was at 22. Now it's at 31. That's pretty nutty. Yeah, we have just supercharged our industry, that's for sure. Strong force weakening has been discovered. Let's take diplomacy next. We can get the engineering retreat in 109 days. I think that's a combination of production and research. That might be good to build on certain kinds of planets. build a hyperpower plant here. This thing gets six industry per day. Let's see if I remember that. I don't remember how much the hyperpower plant actually gives. Anyway. Um, keep on building mega facilities. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't think this place has any red tiles. Oh, that one's not a red square. Okay. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm, 
Okay. It's given some amount more. I'm not sure if there's a break-even point where it's not worth building hyperpower versus building another factory. There probably is. Now we have to figure out what it is. But a lot of these little systems are now producing more than what my old powerhouse systems were producing. Which is pretty good. Like this place, 32 per day, that's more than anything was producing before we researched the hyperpower plant. I remember the hyperpower plant was good, but I didn't remember why it was good. Well, now I do. <laughs> 37 per day. This place definitely deserves being a... Um, a shipyard eventually. Uh, this place is too small. I'm not going to build hyperpower here. I'm just going to put in two mega facilities and call it a day. Do you would like to speak with you? They would like to offer peace. Sure, whatever. See ya. We destroyed one of your ships a long time ago, and nothing has happened since then. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, let's remove that one and put in another factory. Okay, you in a factory. on pumping them mega facilities out. Um, yeah. More mega facilities. More, more. And you are starting to run out of old factories on some of these planets. It's a good sign. Means we can go back to expanding instead of replacing again. Although technically I'm doing this backwards, you really should replace. You should probably be more efficient to expand instead of replace, but I um I don't like doing that. It's messy and ugly. Okay. Coming hmm. along fairly well. 37 industry per day on our home planet. 55 research per day. Pretty good. It's not our biggest industrial planet though. This one's 38 for example, although it is far less in research. It's actually giving eight research per day. Just from these two? Really? They're both on blue squares, but still, that's nuts. All right. Get rid of that last factory. Okay. All right, Philadelphia 1, with its 44 industry per day, is going to be restructured into 
a shipyard planet. Because even our home planet is nowhere close to that. I mean, it will be eventually, but... Um, you have 30 industry per day. Yeah, you're not worth restructuring yet. Thirty nine per day. We have some pretty powerhouse little systems here, don't we? Um I think we're gonna leave the last population alone. And we're just gonna do scientists take over on this planet for now. Twenty six research. That's pretty good. Okay. Build an industrial mega facility. We can use our special ability again. Hurrah. That'll improve things a lot. You no longer build scientists take over. You are going to instead build industry. Now that you have free population space that makes it worth doing. Oh yeah, this place. I should probably replace your factories with better ones. Okay. Oh really? No prosperity, huh? Um, okay fine, we're gonna have to rip out one of these and build a hydroponifier. Apparently it is possible to hit zero prosperity. Yeah, we're gonna have to rip out this old factory here and replace it with a hydroponifier as well. Fun. Um. You, we don't have all the factories replaced. Okay, let's get working on finishing that. Okay, you have two free population space. It'll take seven days to grow your population. During that time, let's continue replacing factories. Shipyard has been completed. Let's build a dock. Okay, there's nothing left to replace here. There's two free population. Population grown in five days. Okay, do scientists take over until done? Okay. Keep replacing them last few factories. We're up to 41 industry per day on the home planet. Discovered diplomacy. Let's go ahead and do mass phasing, I think. Logic Factory. I don't remember what that one does. Or what Endless Party does, for that matter. We'll get there eventually. Oops, apparently I had a button that zooms me all the way back to the top of the tech tree. I had forgotten that this game's tech tree grows down until I actually started playing. It seems so backwards, but that's just how it is. <clears throat> Diplomacy? You mean there's an option other than beating them into submission? Yes, survey. Yes, there is. Technically. A factory and a green square, huh? Well, guess what? It's going to be an industrial mega facility now. Okay, population growth in three days. 
Let's continue replacing our factories. Orbital docks are complete on Philadelphia. Let's go ahead and give it a shield. Industrial mega facility. Replace that factory with another one. Okay. A home planet. Last factory is being replaced by a mega facility. And we can get back to work on improving this orbital infrastructure some more. Okay, we have a free population here. Population will grow in nine days. Um, 41 industry. I'm going to go ahead and build a research campus right here. Okay, how much research are we getting? Eight per day off a single... No, no, two research campuses on blue zones. I'm really... I don't know. Sometimes this game confuses me over exactly what its rules are for how much you produce based on how many buildings. I don't think it's quite as simple as... I used to think it was. There's modifiers in play that I don't know about, I think. Anyway. Let's get second orbital shield. Then we can get a second orbital missile battery, and then we will have one population left for building ships. Um... Continue replacing these factories. Although eventually that's going to be a, a research world. Okay, we have replaced all of our factories here. Let's go ahead and start building some missile batteries. We have a way to defend the home world that doesn't involve having ships nearby. Um... Build another mega facility. Orbital shield. Okay, you now get a orbital missile base. Okay. You have to be a hydroponifier because we're at zero prosperity and that's not okay. Prosperity is pretty low here, too, but we don't really need it because we're not growing very fast. We don't need to grow very fast. This will definitely be capped off when I get... You know what? Let's go ahead and build a transport tube and get there now. Okay, so this place, no free population. It means we do scientist takeover. We could do alien hospitality and suck up to the rest of the races thing in the galaxy, but... Nah, they can get stuffed. More scientists take over. Any factories left? Yeah, a couple. Okay, you get to be a hydroponifier. Um, okay. Now, I think that's the last factor that needs to be replaced in this place. Okay, there's two factories remaining. We're producing 45 industry per day. If I delete one factory on a red square, we're producing 44. So that was worth exactly one industry, even though it was on a red square. 
the Philadelphia one. 44 industry per day. We're replacing that on a red square. Let's see what it actually gives us. Um, no. Go away. There. Population will grow in 25 days. All right. Well, we have plenty of time to replace these factories, then, I guess. Um, I'm just going to leave this on scientists take over for now. I don't really care enough to about spending that last population to make it worth it. Um, same here. I'm going to give it scientists take over and call it fine for now. that last population open in case of an emergency project or something. Okay, Philadelphia 1. 46. That's worth like 3? Okay, we're at 46. We abandoned this factory in a red square. 45. So yeah, deleting one of those, de deleting a factory on a red square removes one. We're now at 45. Building a new industrial mega facility on the same square seems to give us three. There's something weird going on with those calculations. Either the factories became worth less when we researched more technology or something. I'm going to go ahead and put hydroponifier on that tile. This prosperity is looking a little thin on the ground. Okay. Build another missile. I said let's build another missile. Philadelphia 1, which was 45, is now 47. So this one's worth definitely two points. Building a mega facility. There must be some kind of diminishing returns or something to building lots on one planet. Because it's not a simple linear calculation, there's no way. Alright, we need to maintain a free population so we can actually build ships here. So... Scientists take over it is. 55 research per day. <laughs> Mass phasing we discovered in 10 days. Okay. You. Mr. Small Angry Rock in Space, you get another orbital missile. Here we have another small angry rock in space. Let's give it a slightly better industrial base. Okay. Um. I'm gonna build a lab here. Crank up a research output. Okay, so we fully replaced our industrial base here with a better one. Um, do I want to try to turn this into an industrial planet? Or do I want to waste the rest of the planet's surface on research? I 
think I'm going to do research on this planet. It doesn't have any blue tiles, but that's fine. We've got lots of open space. We've got a strong industrial base. We're just going to build a giant research thing on it. Okay. Let's give you a little more ind industry. You get another research facility. Okay, you're fully researched or fully upgraded as much as you can, so let's continue giving you more missile bases. Um, more industry? Research campuses? You definitely get research campuses later, after we finish replacing all your factories and adding a few more, maybe. Let's cap that last blue tile. And then we should probably build two more missile bases and call this one good for now. Mass phasing has been researched. Okay. Um, we have a Starling hyperdrive and large ship hall available. I should check to see what the logic factory does. It might be really good for our research. Um, yeah, let's go for that. It also unlocks Endless Party, which I think increases, um, which I think converts to Prosperity, which might be occasionally useful. You get to make a facility. You get to make a facility. Everyone gets to make a facility. Small Angry Rock, ready to get more angry. Let's see. Yes, I was going to build two more missile bases here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cap this with another research campus. That'll just have to be good enough. Okay, this place has no free population. So we're just going to do alien hospitality. No, I just take over, of course. I prefer my Dyson Spheres to be made of missile launchers. I prefer that if an alien fleet were to arrive in one of my systems that they go away as expeditiously as possible. And so therefore, I like to have at least a few discouragers in orbit around all my planets. Someday we will get a better version of these to replace our current or ones, but at that point, I suppose I will have to do it. Okay, you... And just do alien hospitality for now? No, scientists take over. Of course. 89 research per day from this place. Pretty nice. Um, let's keep replacing factories. Population will grow in a couple days. Okay. I probably actually here. Abandon. I am going to replace you with a hydroponifier because this place does not have enough prosperity. This thing, this place has one prosperity per day. 
I should probably give it some hydroponifiers as well. Yeah. Let's build a mega facility for now and then we'll put a hydroponifier or two down here. Guys, we need to get... We don't have enough prosperity on a lot of our planets. I mean, we do, but we don't. This place has four. It probably wouldn't hurt to cap off some of these green tiles. You don't need a lot of prosperity most of the time, but this one's got two per day, despite having two hydroponifiers. Yeah. It'll have to be good enough for now. Um. More research. More research. We'll build one more hydroponifier for now, and then we'll go back to building uh, probably a mix of research and economy for now. Another orbital missile base finished at one of the angry rocks. I should actually see if I can go in and rename that planet to angry rock, but I don't know if you can rename planets after you capture them. I don't think you and anyway let's drop another campus there um nine prosperity per day that's pretty good we went from two to nine just by adding two more of these i don't know what oh it must be consuming a certain amount of prosperity to maintain our existing population or something because these are definitely providing more than that. That would probably, that would explain it. Let's go ahead and add another research campus down there. Okay, you. More research campus. Okay, this place is fully upgraded. It has one prosperity per day, but population is full, so I'm gonna be happy with the way it is. We're gonna leave these two slots free for now and just do scientists take over. Let the extra population sit around and fiddle their thumbs. We don't really have room for them to do anything there. Um. Build some more orbital missile bases. Okay. More research. More research. Uh, I don't want to build a... I think this place is probably build, big enough to build a hyperpower plant. We'll stick one in. Hopefully it's useful. Okay. More research. Okay. You have one last one to replace. Oh, come on. There we go. Missile base. No free population. Population will grow in 17 days. Okay. Scientists take over it is. Build a factory down here, or mega facility, whatever. Another research compa campus. Oh, 
many days until our current research is done? 21. Seven industry gets turned into two research. Not too great. Um. Ugh. Let's see. Let's build another research. This place is only producing 14 research. Really? Seems like the blue squares are really valuable. This place is producing 21 with a bunch of buildings. Um, let's go ahead and drop a couple more. Okay, build one more research campus over here. Boom. Okay, five research campuses gets us 17 research per day. Not terrible. Prosperity's doing pretty well. Um, 30 industry per day. Yeah, I think we're fine to keep building more research. Okay, we've completed mega facility here. So there's nothing left to do on this planet for now. So we'll just go ahead and do scientist takeover, which gets us three research per day. Woo! <laughs> the little planets really do not produce enough to make it worth it, but it's something they can do, so might as well. Um, more research. Damn it. There. Okay. Enough energy to use our special ability. Okay, that's two more population space for every single planet, which means we need to go back and reconsider some of our previous decisions. Namely, some of our planets need to be taken off of whatever they're doing and put back to work again. Okay, so this place has finally gained population. 50 days before it grows some more. What a while. In the meantime, okay, planets. You have plenty of population space. You... Less so, but still enough. Um... Go ahead and give these guys one more industrial mega facility and then we'll think about it. You... Are in a similar situation where you can definitely build more stuff. Let's give them... Another research campus up there. Might as well. You just pointlessly gained more population. There's no reason we can ever use that. Same here. Philadelphia 1, on the other hand, can make use of it. Uh, your prosperity is doing okay, TM, but let's go ahead and add one more hydroponifier anyway. Okay, you're busy. You... Why are you building scientists take over? Okay, whatever. Um... Yeah, you definitely should not have been building scientists takeover. You should have been working a long time ago. Actually, here, let's not even do that. Build the hyperpower plant first. Okay. 
Okay, the home planet should build um prosperity is doing fine Our research is fine let's go ahead and add industrial mega facilities okay This colony has got a free population. We're going to go ahead and sink it straight into our orbital missile base. Get it up to its quota. Um, you... More labs. You can also build more labs. You'll grow in one day. I'm not going to do anything to this plant. I'm not even going to set. Hey, how long do you grow? Grow in one day? <laughs> All right, we'll just hold off. And then you can bother assigning it. How about you? You're growing four days. Um, I'll give you scientist takeover. Okay, you, I am going to build a research campus on the greens, on the blue square up there. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. Um, the home world. I am going to go ahead and build more industry here. Uh, this place is fully upgraded. Population in two days. Sure, we'll just do scientist takeover for now. Okay, how far off are we on research? Two days. Nice. Advanced fun techniques. Uh, let's take engineering retreat. No, let's take light bending first, then we'll do engineering retreat. Okay, now what does the new building we just unlocked do? Logic Factory. It provides both research and prosperity. So what we probably should do is start building Logic Factories in every green tile we see. Because... That'll be a much more efficient use of our land. I don't think this place has any green. Well, it has a couple green tiles, I guess. Um, hmm. I think I'm just going to go ahead and build two more orbital muscles here, and we'll call it a day. Uh, sure, we'll trade technologies. Was that a good idea? Probably not. Actually, we're no longer researching what we were researching. Which means we just got light bending for free. Okay. Straight on to thought analysis then. Okay, so we did get a couple things for that, I think.
So according to this, we're probably the most technologically advanced race currently known. Our fleet is definitely the smallest, though. <laughs> These guys are second smallest by a mile. We actually have a pretty reasonable number of colonies compared to the rest of everyone. And these guys, I guess, are probably getting eaten by the Shivar. Yeah. I should probably send try to send a fleet over to those guys and help them out. Declare war on the Shivar and go exploring. Um, okay, hope one is out of population. That's fine, though, because we want to save a free population so we can build a ship. Although we can't do that currently. Because they don't have a population. How would population will grow in five days? So we could grow up, build a ship in five days if we wanted to. Which I don't want to build ships right now. I should be building ships, but eh, maybe later. For now, prosperity five per day. If I delete one of my hydroponifiers, we'll go down to two per day. If I then build a logic factory, which will take three days. Okay, no free population. A few scientists take over for now. Endless party to help population grow a little faster. Wow, look at that. <laughs> okay. Research campuses. We built the logic factory here. We build another one. I want to see if it's worth replacing. Okay, this one stays lost, stays the same. We're not doing anything special. This place doesn't get anything done to it either. Just two scientists take over and call it a day. Okay, was this the place where I deleted it? And built logic factory as a test? Up prosperity four per day. It was five, I think, if this is the same place. So technically we're losing a little bit of prosperity if we replace these, but we're gaining a little bit of research. I think we're going from two prosperity to one prosperity, one research, or something like that. Assuming that I am at anywhere approximating cor correct on how this all works. So sort of useful. Not worth replacing anything much though. Build that last orbital missile base. Okay, you get another research ca campus. Okay, this place, it seems to be at least not hurting it to replace them with logic factories. I'm just going to keep doing it because we have a lot of green squares here that we don't need to have hydroponifiers on. And this is kind of turning into a research facility anyway. So it sort of makes sense to do it. Give this endless party so the population grows a little faster so we can get that last missile base down. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, this keeps scientists takeover because it is a shipyard world. Hyperpower plant is complete. It means we start ripping out the old factories and replacing them with mega facilities. Okay. How did this place not get upgraded yet? Well, I guess we're doing it now. Um, you... Four per day. Yeah, okay. This is the one I deleted the test. That was... Went from five to four. Alright, we're not doing anything else to this place for now. We'll just do scientist takeover and call it good. Um, you... No free population. We're doing scientist takeover and calling it good. Another research campus. Let's build yet another one. And it probably would make some... Well... Prosperity's at five per day. We'll I'll think about if it makes sense to do any logic factories. This place, it is indeed losing a little bit of prosperity for every one of those I build, but as long as I build more of them on green tiles, it should make it worthwhile. I'm not going to start wholesale replacing the hydro hydroponifiers or anything yet, though. Yeah, we're up to eight per day. That's not bad. I ain't going to replace some of them for sure. Oops. Yeah, there you go. There's probably some of our planets. The little ones. It would make sense to do that. Like this one, we've got a lot of stuff on green squares. Where it makes sense to rip some of this stuff out. Maybe. Ah, maybe later. If we get something that gives prosperity and... Um, industry. Then it might be worth it. Build more research campuses. Speaking of research, how many days? 43 more? Replace another one of these with yet another logic factory. Stop accidentally clicking cancel. Boom. We are lowering our prosperity pretty quickly now, but really here. No, cancel that. Abandon that. Abandon that. Build. Logic factory. Let's not build any logic factories on non-green squares. It's a waste to do that. We'll probably end up removing any of these that aren't on green squares already, like this one. And then build out to these squares to get cap them. <clears throat> And there we have yet another bot. Okay. A free population. Um, don't need to do anything here because there's no place to build except in space. And I don't feel the need to do that on that planet. Okay. Now... I'm going to go ahead and give them an industrial mega facility there. Juice that up just a little bit. Continue replacing their factories here.
Oh, I know how this didn't get replaced. It was a... Yeah, okay. This was a... Well, that doesn't make sense, though. Oh, it does make perfect sense. Okay, so this one... I was like, how in the world did I not remember to replace all the factories? Well, what happened is... This place is a shipyard world. And it had... Before, before the new factory came out, I had covered it completely, or you know, ran out of population. I had one population left, and then I set it to do the special project with one population remaining, because that way I could just come back here and start building ships right away. So I had to delete something first. And then I did, apparently, three separate iterations of using my race, racial special power, adding six population to this world, <laughs> which of course filled up and they never got notifications that it was filling up because they were busy doing a project, so they weren't sitting idle. And there had been free um, population when I set it working, so it didn't need to notify me that it now had free population. Oops. This is why you want to go into your planet list and look around every now and again. Just kind of make sure that it's not doing something that it shouldn't. I'm going to leave these three here for now. Get another research campus going. Okay, this place is a free population. And there's a whole lot of not not able to do much with it, so we'll just leave it alone for now. That's probably another one that someday we'll get an upgrade for, and I'll forget all about, and it won't get got until all of a sudden I realize, oh, hey, we have a plant just sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> um... More research campuses, I guess. Industrial Mega Facility. Build another one. Okay. Build another research campus. Um... Do ships take pop? Can you put shipyards on a small planet so them to extra pop and build a fleet up? Um, ships do not take population. It takes one population to build a ship, but you get that population back after the ship's finished building. So the population is busy until the ship is done building and then they're unbusy again and they're free. There is a ship, separate ship cap. We have two ships, two more allowed, it says. I really should build a fast explorer ship and set it off on exploring the universe. You know what, let's do that. Um, Philadelphia 1. I'm going to have you build a ship. We don't have the large hull yet, but... We'll put in two motors. Um, a generator. No shields. Five star lane drives. And is there anything else this thing actually needs? Besides just motors and generators? I, you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and put in a couple of sensors. So it can see past the end of its nose. Okay, there we go. 
AI ships, nobody on board. <laughs> uh, there aren't any, well, you, I guess technically if you build colony modules, maybe you could consider that people on board. But um, there aren't any crew modules or anything. You have weapons, you have engines, you have sensors, you have generators, you have miscellaneous equipment, and you have shields. The miscellaneous equipment is all kinds of random bullshit. <laughs> Everywhere from colonization modules, invasion modules. Uh, what the hell is the mass condenser? All ships you attracted toward the affected ship. Works at long ranges, consumes a lot of power. Phase bombs for bombing planet surfaces. Replenisher recharges all of weapons on board a ship. Be very useful during large battles. Allows the ship to repair damage to another ship by absorbing that damage itself. Now, it's possible to uh, make repair ships using this thing. Although, usually you end up, as it says, destroying your ships doing that. Gravimetric catapult is interesting way to move. Basically, it takes it from wherever you are and moves you to the opposite side of the system relative to the sun. It's a really unique item. What the hell is this? Particles and part of the momentum ship buffeting it away without damaging it. Oh, okay. It's a, that pushes enemy ships away from you. The star lane drive... Basically allows you to move from system to system. There's a red version of this that allows you to move through the red lanes faster too. Just an upgrade. A cloaker, which means you can be invisible. Sort of. X-ray mega glasses work together with sensors so you can see what's installed in enemy ships. Recaller allows you to immediately teleport straight home. I'm not sure what this actually does. The intellect scrambler. Molecular tie down, I think, just makes it so ships can't move. Yeah. Anyway, let's build this thing. Got one. 11 days to completion. Oh, it's 1047 already. I should probably wrap this up. Go to the research campus over there. Uh. You know, we're never really getting out of our little four system cluster here. Oh, the Shivar took that system. You know what? I should declare war on the Shivar just so I can take that from them. The Shivar declared war on me earlier. I should build myself a ship with invasion modules on it and come over here and take this away from them. Just so I can own this whole system. Probably later though, because as noted, it is getting late. It is late and getting later. We do have a ship here in transit very, very slowly to whatever's over here. Yeah, we really have not explored very much of the galaxy. <laughs> There's a whole lot of it out there, and it's full of various races who like us and do not like us. I don't think most of them are too unhappy with us at the moment. The Shivar don't like anyone. Who's at war with who right now? It looks like the Shivar are at war with a bunch of different people. We should probably go ahead and build up a fleet 
and go help the rest of everyone else kick the Shivar's ass. Anyway. Maybe next week. <laughs> Before I completely forget what I was doing next time I play. That's probably what would happen. Wait, anyway, let's go ahead and save our game. This this game's really old, like 95. Okay, so it's not like super old DOS era, but it's not particularly new either. But the interface is really good. It's clear, it's full of useful information. Yeah, it's just really good. It's also fun to play. Extremely early precursor to Stellaris, it looks like. I've never played Stellaris, so I can't really say, but... It, um... It's a very early 4X game, for sure. And definitely, in my opinion, it's still fun to play. It's um, much more shallow than a modern game would be. But what's here is well done. Except the AI. The AI is like derpy and slow and not very smart. And, but the antagonist AI that came out, like I said, in a later patch um, is better. At least more challenging. But it's still a fun game. <laughs> anyway, let's exit to DOS. <laughs> and, as was the tradition at the time, they have a little message that pops up in your text console after you exit. Thank you for playing Ascendancy. A lot of DOS games did that when they exited. Because they're just going to dump you into the command prompt anyway, so they took a second to just write a little bit of something to the console before they did. Sometimes it would be, please buy our game. <laughs> or sometimes it's just, thank you for playing our game in, in this case. But anyway. That's enough DOS prompt for one day. Oh, who's doing what? Um, looks like a whole lot of nobody doing anything. Okay. Boring people. Someone needs to tell them to stream on Thursdays. That or I need to go browsing through Twitch and find more people to raid. But... Oh well. Tomorrow, I believe, is Friday, which means some good old crab champions run around and shoot skulls, and I would say get more diamond medals, but we have them all, so. Yay, we're back to being. No real reason to play the game except that it's fun. <laughs> anyway. And then Saturday, we'll have some EDF 6. Um, Sunday, we'll have some X4. We're getting pretty close to the end of that X4 run, I think. But I can probably drag it out a few more weeks until the... Um, Factorial DLC comes around. That is only a couple weeks away. And then, of course, we'll be right back to the normal weekly schedule. 
right where we were at the start of last week. Uh, but for tonight, since nobody on my follow list is streaming, I don't think we're going to raid anybody. So, yeah. Hopefully you all have an awesome night. And I will see you all later. Good night. And goodbye.